So it took about a year, but I am finally convinced I am a believer in using AI to help me call all of my photography. I've been using an app called Aftershoot and a bunch of other apps like Narrative Select, something called Filter Pixel, a bunch of other technologies. I've been thinking about how to review something like an artificial intelligence calling app uh, for a while now. And you know, it's so difficult because you're talking about full galleries whittled down to just the best photos. And then, and it's just such a subjective experience that it's really hard to prove to you and show you exactly why I'm convinced that artificial intelligence is now at the level that it's genuinely helpful. I've decided to just sit down, show you the, the inner workings of the app that I'm using, and then link out to a few full galleries that you can review and just look at the end result and judge for yourself if you think it's a good gallery or a bad gallery. At the end of the day, if you're not the actual photographer who took the photos, who worked on the photos, and then finally delivered the photos, all that matters is the end result. And then you just have to take my word for it that artificial intelligence genuinely made the process both faster in terms of raw numbers, the actual timing that it took to go through it, but also mentally, it took a lot of stress out of the process. And at the end of the day, just made my workflow uh, a better experience for myself. So linked in this description are two galleries, one that is a cold down version of the gallery using Aftershoot, and one is the cold down version that I did manually. And you can compare for yourself. But I'm just gonna dump a folder of raw files and just go through a beginning to end demo of exactly how the app works. Um, now, I actually came across Aftershoot through a Reddit post, I think in the Wedding Photographer subreddit, sometime around like January of last year. And I got really excited about it because I never considered a third-party app developer being able to come up with something that would actually slip right into my workflow easily so that it didn't create a bunch of front end work to get used to the app and setting it up. And it just, yeah, I, I thought for sure AI, if it was ever gonna work, had to come from Adobe. And I have been proven completely wrong about that. Um, but this was how the app first worked when uh, I started testing it. And I got an alpha version. It was basically just a window that you drop your folder of images into. Then it did some stuff with a little bit of customization from your end, but not much. It was up you to take it from there. Uh, this version of Aftershoot, thankfully, is no longer, they've made a lot of strides. I'll show you what the newest version looks like here. So you're actually presented with a grid of albums. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new album. You can see I've called 28,000 photos. Um, and I think actually that got reset at some point. Uh, let's see, so I'm gonna dump a folder of raw files. Now, one of the things that it does when you initially import this album is like an importing render. So it takes all the embedded JPEG previews from your raw files and renders them in a cache folder so that Aftershoot can look at them quickly and efficiently. Instead of having to look at the actual raw files, it's looking at the embedded JPEG previews to make a judgment about uh, whether it's blurry or there's closed eyes or any of those, any of the AI sorted filters. Um, so one thing to keep in mind, if you shoot in camera in black and white, I know a lot of photographers do this. They set their um, they set their live view and all of the images to be black and white, even though they'll ultimately edit them and deliver them as color. In camera, they're black and white so they can make better assessments about the lighting and composition. If you do that, it may present an accuracy issue with Aftershoot. I'm not exactly sure how or if that's if it's a big deal, but it's something to keep in mind. I have to believe that using color somewhere in the artificial intelligence helps it be more accurate in the assessment of the overall photo. Uh, so it just pulls the JPEG previews. It looks like it's gonna take about two minutes. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how many images I had in this folder. Let me check. So I think I had about 2,000 images in this folder. It says 4,000, but half of those are XMP files. And speaking of XMP files, that's actually uh, one really cool thing. So after importing, what Aftershoot does is it doesn't actually write or change anything about your images themselves. It writes colors or star filters to the metadata, which is in the XMP sidecar file. If you ever see an XMP file next to your raw file, that is just a ton of data that Lightroom can interpret. So one of the things I want to address while this is finishing the import is sort of the general sense of distrust or uh, uncomfortableness when it comes to talking about AI, you know, a computer and artificial intelligence making the decision, a creative decision for you as a photographer. It feels weird to give up some control like that, but I've found that since switching to mirrorless cameras, I take like double the number of photos at a session. 
just because of the nature of a mirrorless camera being a lot faster, not only in the actual frames per second, but the feel and operation of it is way faster using uh, the EVF or the flip screen on the back in live view. Like it's just, it feels like almost like you're taking video and just hitting record. Eventually that will literally be what it is to, to do photography is just hit record like you're taking video, but we're not quite there yet. Over the past two years since transitioning to the Canon mirrorless system, I have noticed literally almost double the number of photos that I'm taking at a, any given wedding. And so leveraging something like AI can actually enable you to shoot in incredible burst rates and have 30,000 images from a wedding run it through artificial intelligence like Aftershoot and still only have like 800 photos that you actually have to really edit down for you know your client deliverables. So the more you can push past the com uncomfortable kind of growing pains of leveraging something like AI, uh, the sooner you can do that, the better, I believe. And I think eventually we will probably get to a point where AI will actually do a way better job than you as a human in determining are eyes open, are eyes closed? Is this perfectly sharp on the face that I want? Is it compositionally uh, tasteful? That's all stuff that eventually AI will, will enable. Um, okay, so this finished the import. I'm gonna go ahead and start the calling while I, while I talk about a few other points. Um, so at this stage, you say start calling and you are presented with a few options. They're actually reworking this interface to have a slightly clearer idea of exactly what's uh, being adjusted. But to summarize, this is where you can sort of adjust the strictness of the algorithm. How forgiving you want it to be of a blurry photo, what it considers blurry. If you want it to be strict, lenient, or moderate. Uh, the criteria for a duplicate photo, if it's like exactly the same, uh, or if it's like somewhat similar, like you can kind of play with these adjustments to dial what you think is good, especially after your first or second album through Aftershoot, you'll probably have a better sense of where the limits are. But the most important thing when you first launch the app is to go to change stars and colors and customize the, the color flag and the star flag for whatever makes sense with your current workflow. So for me, I actually have star ratings that I already use. I have a system in place for that that I've always used. So I just got rid of star rankings completely. I don't want Aftershoot to override what I already have sort of in my system. But for color rankings, there's only one color that I ever used. And then the keyword section, all this does is, is embed the actual keyword of that filter. So the, the word selected will get embedded in the metadata keyword of your photo. So that's just kind of an extra bonus. I don't really have a huge use for that, but might as well include that. Um, so once you have a system that makes sense for your current workflow, uh, just hit continue and then start calling. Just try your first gallery. Now it, it says go grab some coffee, so I'm literally gonna drink some coffee while this uh, churns away. Now at this stage, it actually won't matter whether you're calling raw files or JPEGs, if you happen to have a folder of JPEGs for some reason. Um, it's pulling from what it initially rendered when you imported, which is the embedded JPEG previews. One thing to note that's really important is it does all the actual calling and all the processing intensive power directly on your machine. It doesn't go to the cloud for that. The speed at which it'll get through the call, it's going to be dependent on how powerful your actual computer is. So it's already 5% completed, but at the very, very end, once it's totally done, it will actually tell us exactly how long it took to do this entire collection. Uh, one of the features I've requested they put in there is uh, like active folder monitoring. So my hope is that if I come back late at home from a wedding and I start to import and back up my images as the copying of my images from the memory cards to my actual destination on my external hard drive, as that occurs, hopefully Aftershoot can automatically start calling without me having to manually hit start like I'm demoing here. I'd really like this whole process to be happening while I'm asleep. So the next morning I can wake up and immediately start editing in Lightroom. So, okay, the time estimated remaining is 16 minutes. That's pretty good. And this isn't actually the fastest computer in the world. <laughs> uh, this is just my laptop. Normally I would probably run this on my iMac Pro in my main office. Okay, so it finished the call of 2,065 images in 30 minutes, 51 seconds. So about 31 minutes. Now, one of the things you can do is just immediately export um, the, the photos into Lightroom if you don't have them imported into Lightroom yet or Capture One, but you can also make adjustments in Aftershoot itself. So you can sort by selected all the green samples and it will show you related duplicates right next to it. But one of the cool things about adjusting the Aftershoot results in Aftershoot is that over time, 
it learns your own unique user preferences. And the longer that you use it and the more you correct for it here and there, the smarter it gets. Um, that being said, at this current stage, exactly where it's iter exactly at the release that it's at right now, which is version 2.37, I am not making adjustments in Aftershoot myself. Eventually, I hope to be able to. Um, I just prefer to do it in Lightroom, and I'll show you my workflow for that in a second. But just to give you a quick glance at what the results are, I find that sorting by kind of the rejects first is a is a good first pass on how well it did or didn't do. Um, and the reason for that is it's usually uh, sort of a gray area between what a photographer might consider good enough to deliver and like really good to show. So there's more of a spectrum of what you might include in your keepers versus obviously bad photos that everybody has their eyes closed and they're not laughing or it's super blurry because of uh, focus issues or because of this particular case, uh, slow, too slow of a shutter speed. Uh, but what's really cool is no matter what, when you click into the loop view like this and double click on any images, it shows you any related duplicates. So you can see the one that it picked versus the one that it didn't. And then one cool aspect is in this view, you do get a uh, zoomed in kind of key faces view, which is, which is kind of neat. So this particular image had a ton of duplicates. I must have just held the shutter down for like 10 seconds, but let's see which ones it shows as keepers. Yes, I like all of those. Um, this one is probably my favorite from the bunch, but I'm not gonna, personally, I'm not gonna worry about, about correcting for Aftershoot's choices until I hit Lightroom. Uh, but you can see, yep, this one's obviously, uh, you, oh, that's nice, you can pinch to, to zoom. I didn't realize right here in the loop view. So you can obviously, that one missed focus, obviously a blurry photo. Like it does a good job identifying so this one, yeah, yeah, the faces, once you zoom in there, are, are a little bit blurry. Ooh, I actually kind of like this one. Let's see what the related duplicate. Ooh, I like the one that it shows even better. So you can kind of get a feel, I think, faster for how accurate the decisions <laughs> of the artificial intelligence were by looking through the rejects first. Now with eyes closed, you know, it does a good job of detecting, especially when both people have eyes closed, but there's a trade-off to this. You're gonna probably wanna take a manual quick glance at all of the eyes closed versions because a lot of times people close their eyes when they're laughing and you know, you might wanna include that. Like this one, like her eyes are open, his are closed, but they're both kind of laughing. Let me see what it shows as the, okay, this is the one that it shows for me, which I really like actually better than, uh, way better than the one where his eyes are slightly closed. So just a quick glance to see, like it does a really good job of figuring out the kind of unflattering eyes closed images. Uh, like this one, I don't like his side eye. Let's see which ones it shows. There we go. So it definitely surfaced to the top. I'm selecting the green ones here over in the related duplicates. I love every single one that it shows better than the one that it rejected. Um, so I would absolutely look here first instead of, uh, your, your temptation is probably going to be to like look at selected and like, let's see here. There's probably one in the selected group that I don't love. Yeah, this one's like, okay. It's not my favorite moment. There's a lot of duplicates that I can look at, but in general, you're going to have to run your own gallery through this and make start, start getting your own sense of of how well it did or didn't do. But the fact that it took me from about 2000 photos to about 600 makes it so much easier now to start the final manual call before I start to edit. And what I do, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save where I'm at. Um, instead of uh, using any of the export features right now, I mean, they're kind of okay, but I don't love them. And if you're like me and you already have the images that you called through Aftershoot imported into Lightroom, um, you don't actually have to export or worry about anything at this point, except jumping into Lightroom. Select all the images that are already imported into Lightroom. Uh, right click on all of them that are selected, go to metadata, and then read metadata from files. Then Lightroom will slowly populate and you'll start to see all the colorization flags correlating to green, in my case, means selected, yellow means a duplicate, purple means blurry or closed eyes. And that's pretty much it. At this stage, my workflow has been to sort by green, which means all the selected ones, manually flag in my keepers from here. So it would take me no time at all to cull through 584 pictures. Then I start my editing process. And if while I'm editing, I wanna see if I have any duplicate options, maybe a slightly better moment than what was chosen by Aftershoot, then I enable the color filter and peek at the duplicates that way. Uh, that, tends, that seems to be a pretty fast way to um, go through my workflow. Then I will take a quick sort by 
purple and very, very quickly scan just to see if there's any moments where they're laughing and their eyes are closed because they're laughing or because they're closed for a creative reason that I you know, told them to close their eyes or something like that. But I only look at the purple uh, when I'm actually working on an edit. I look at that after everything else because I already have in my head what I have from each moment and I don't wanna add something that's unnecessary or just doesn't make sense. So I wanna point one other thing out. Uh, one of my concerns early on was like, okay, what if I'm, I have a creative reason that their eyes are closed or maybe it's uh, they're out of focus on purpose or just something creatively in the shot is probably gonna confuse the AI and it's not gonna include it. Well, you'll see here, um, this says, this image has focus issues, but it was still selected because it belongs to a duplicate group. What's cool about that is if it detects a duplicate burst of photos and none of them pass the threshold uh, to be included, it will force itself to choose one image so that you still see it in the overall selection. You can tell it to include that creative shot. Um, so that's it. That is where I'm at right now with using Aftershoot. I am thoroughly impressed. Again, uh, at this time last year when I was testing it, I kind of felt that it was making um, choices sometimes smartly, but sometimes not accurately enough. But in the past six months, it has definitely crossed the threshold into the actual AI being more than smart enough to make a huge impact on the raw number of images I have to actually work through. The funny thing about AI is even if it doesn't save you literal time, like stopwatch, you time yourself with it, time yourself without it, uh, it will save you time. But even if it didn't do that, it still offsets a huge amount of, of mental load by being 90 or 95% accurate with the choices that it does give you. Um, I relate it to using a self-driving car. It takes you the exact same amount of time to get from your starting point to your end destination. But if you use Tesla self-driving uh, for the vast majority of that trip, 90% of the time, if you're on the highway, you arrive there feeling much more refreshed and energized versus if you have to sit there and make micro decisions the entire time that you're driving. Aftershoot feels a lot like that. Plus it does actually save you time getting to your final destination. Um, I'm very impressed. Again, included in the links of this description, I'm gonna have a full gallery of my manually included cold options, and then a full gallery of what Aftershoot included, as well as the final delivered, uh, fully edited gallery that I sent to my clients. So you can do somewhat of a quick comparison there, but you really have to run this yourself to get a to get a feel for it on your own images with your own camera settings and everything else. Um, if you're a patron of mine, I, I actually have coupon code for a huge discount, but absolutely everybody can download this and trial it for two weeks. So you really have nothing to lose. I highly recommend you try Aftershoot. I've tried Narrative Select, Filter Pixel, a few of their competitors, and nothing comes even close. Please let me know any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for your attention, and I'll be back soon. Bye.